It's another video about the ultimate speed run of networking protocol. In this video, I'm going to break down every protocol an ethical hacker needs to know as quickly and simply as possible. We'll explore everything from basic web protocols to advanced industrial ones, all while throwing in examples, metaphors, and a bit of humor to make it stick for you. If you want to sell your service to companies and help them protect their software and websites, make sure to check out Roladel.com if you haven't already. After watching this video, link is in the comments. Are you ready? Let's dive in. We'll begin with the basics, HTTP and HTTPS. Picture HTTP as a delivery service for a website, but one that's sending your information on postcards. Everyone can read what's on them, but then HTTPS shows up, putting those postcards in an envelope, locking it with encryption so no one else can peek inside. This makes HTTPS essential for any site that handles sensitive information like banking or shopping. Then there's TCP and IP, the foundation of everything we do online. Think of TCP as a careful delivery driver, ensuring every data packet arrives safely, while IP is the GPS that tells TCP exactly where to go. Without these two working together, the internet would be in absolute chaos. Next up is UDP. If TCP is a careful delivery truck, UDP is like a bicycle messenger zooming through traffic. It's faster because it doesn't wait around to check if every packet made it. That's why it's used for live streams and online gaming, where speed is more important than perfection. Moving on to DNS, every domain owner knows this. This is the domain name system. It's like the internet's phone book when you type in a web address. DNS look up the IP address and directs you to the right place, but if a hacker messes with it, they can redirect you to a fake site instead, which is known as DNS spoofing. Now let's talk about FTP and SFTP. The protocols for transferring files. Think of FTP as sending your documents in a plain envelope, completely unsecured, but SFTP is like sending them in an armored truck. The difference? Encryption hackers love to target FTP because it's wide open for snooping. SSH is next. The protocol for secure remote logins. Imagine it as a secret tunnel connecting you to a remote server. No one else can see what's happening inside unless they manage to crack your password. It's a favorite among sysadmins and hackers alike. Then there are the email protocols. SMTP, POP3, and IMAP. SMTP sends your emails out while POP3 and IMAP bring your emails in. They're like the behind-the-scenes postal workers of the digital world, but if they're not configured properly, hackers can use them to hijack email accounts or launch phishing attacks. Next, we have SNP, the protocol that's always whispering about what's going on in your network. It's like a nosy neighbor telling you who's home, who's not, and which appliances are acting up. But leave it unsecured and anyone can listen in or worse. Start making changes to your network. ICMP is up next. If you've ever used the ping command, you've used ICMP. It's like sending a quick, are you there, to another computer. Super handy for diagnostics, but hackers can also use it to map out networks. And then we have ARP. ARP is like a translator that converts IP addresses into physical MAC addresses. Imagine you're in a big office and you need to find Bob's desk. ARP tells you where he's sitting, but ARP spoofing can trick you into thinking Bob's desk is somewhere it's not leading your data to a hacker instead. DHCP is up next. This one hands out IP addresses to devices on your network, like a party host assigning seats at a dinner table. But if a hacker slips in and becomes the host, they can give you a seat that sends your data straight into their trap. We can't forget about SSL, TLS, the protocols that secure your web traffic. They're like the locks on your internet communications. Imagine whispering secrets in a crowded room. If someone doesn't have the right key, they can't even drop, but an attack called SSL stripping can downgrade that lock, making it easier to crack. Next, we have LDAP, which is like your network's address book. It stores all the details about users' systems and permissions. If someone unauthorized flips through this book, they can see exactly where your weak spots are. And then there's Telnet. Telnet is the insecure granddaddy of remote login protocols. Imagine shouting your login credentials in a crowded room. Yeah, not a good idea. That's why most people use SSH instead. RDP is next. The protocol for controlling another computer remotely. It's like having the puppet strings to a system across the country. It's great for IT support, but if a hacker gets hold of it, they can run your system like a puppet master. Now let's talk about SMBCIFS. This protocol is like the shared office supply closet used for sharing files and printers on a network. But if it's left unlocked, anyone can wander in and help themselves to sensitive data, making it a target for attackers. NTP, or Network Time Protocol, is a digital timekeeper, making sure all the clocks in your network are synchronized. But if a hacker manipulates it, they can throw off your entire network's timing, causing chaos in logs and communications. SIP is up next, the protocol behind your VoIP calls. It's like a switchboard operator setting up your calls. If it's not secured, an attacker could listen in or even impersonate you on a call for OAuth and OpenID. Imagine them as bouncers outside a club, checking IDs to see if you're allowed in. They don't ask for your whole life story, just a quick check. But if someone manages to forge that ID, they can walk right in. Kerberos is a three-headed guard dog for network authentication. It uses tickets to prove you are who you 
say you are. It's a strong defender, unless someone forges a ticket and sneaks past. Let's move on to MQTT, the protocol. That's like a group chat for IoT devices. It's lightweight and quick, but not always secure. If a hacker joins the chat, they can start sending commands to your devices. Modbus is the protocol that runs industrial devices, think factory machines and power plants, but it's old and lacks modern security, making it like a factory with no locks on the doors. Now, on to BGP. It's the Internet's map maker, managing how data packets are routed between large networks. If someone messes with BGP, they can cause massive outages or redirect traffic for spying. SCTP is next, a protocol designed for telecom networks. It's like having multiple lanes on a highway, allowing for multiple messages to be sent over the same channel without traffic jams. And finally, we have GRE, Gray, an encapsulation protocol that wraps packets inside a tunnel. It's like sending a letter within a letter, making it useful for secure VPN connections. Let's dive into IPSEC, the bodyguard of IP packets. Think of IPSEC as a security guard that not only checks IDs, but also escorts your data packets safely across the network. It's like sending your valuables in a locked briefcase with a security detail ensuring confidentiality, integrity, and authentication. Hackers trying to intercept these packets would have a tough time cracking that briefcase. Next on the list is PPTP and L2TPv3. The early pioneers of VPN protocols are like an old tunnel through a mountain, fast but riddled with security holes. L2TPv3, often paired with IPSEC, is the upgraded tunnel with reinforced walls, providing a safer passage for your data. But remember, even the best tunnels need maintenance to stay secure. Then we have OSPF, the protocol that helps routers find the best path, like a seasoned navigator plotting the quickest route on a map. It's essential for large networks to prevent data from taking the scenic route and slowing things down. If misconfigured, however, data might end up on a detour through hacker land. Moving on to RIP, not the rest in peace kind, but the routing information protocol. It's like the veteran mailman who always takes the same route, even if it's not the most efficient. RIP is simple and easy to set up, but doesn't scale well for larger networks, making it less popular these days. Is Cisco's proprietary routing protocol acting like a secret handshake among Cisco devices? It's smarter than RIP and learns the best paths over time. But if you're not using Cisco gear, you might feel left out of the club. MPLS is up next, which stands for multi-protocol label switching. Think of it as the express lane on a highway for your data packets. It labels and directs traffic efficiently, reducing congestion. Hackers might try to sneak into this express lane to intercept high-priority data. Then there's PPTP, the point-to-point -point protocol. It's like a private conversation between two friends on a tin can telephone line. It's used for direct connections over serial links, but doesn't offer much in terms of security on its own. Poe combines PPTP with Ethernet, allowing that tin can conversation to happen over a larger network, commonly used by ISPs for customer internet connections, but if not secured, it can be tapped into by eavesdroppers. ISIS, or Intermediate System to Intermediate System, is another routing protocol like OSPF Cousin. It's the quiet, efficient type, often used by large service providers to keep data flowing smoothly. Misconfigurations here can lead to data getting lost in transit. HSRP, or Hot Standby Router Protocol, call is like having a backup singer ready to take over. If the lead singer loses their voice, it provides network redundancy by having a standby router ready to step in, minimizing downtime. But if a hacker spoofs HSRP messages, they can redirect traffic their way. VRP is similar to HSRP, but is an open standard. It's the universal understudy in our network theater, ready to fill in when needed. Again, security is key to prevent unauthorized stand-ins from taking over the show. LLDP, or Link Layer Discovery Protocol, is like name tags at a networking event, allowing devices to announce themselves in learn about their neighbors. While useful for network mapping if left unsecured, it provides hackers with a directory of potential targets. CDP, or CISCO Discovery Protocol, is LDP's Cisco-specific counterpart. It's like a VIP guest list at an exclusive party. While great for network management, it can spill too many beans if a hacker gets access. Next, we have NetBIOS, an older protocol used for network communication on local networks. Think of it as the town crier shouting out messages to find other devices. It's noisy and can reveal too much information if not properly managed. DNS or multicast DNS is like neighborhood gossip, sharing information about who's who without needing a central directory. It's used by devices like printers and smart home gadgets to find each other, but an attacker can exploit it to intercept or spoof services. TFTP, or Trivial File Transfer Protocol, is FTP's lightweight sibling. It's like leaving a box of documents on your porch for someone to pick up. No security, no authentication. Convenient but risky if sensitive information is involved. TSP, 
or real-time streaming protocol, is the director behind live video streams, telling the cameras when to start and stop. It's essential for things like security cameras and live broadcasts, but if hijacked, an attacker could tap into your video feeds. RTP, the real-time transport protocol, carries the actual video and audio data like the actors on stage. SRTP adds security to the mix, putting bodyguards around those actors to prevent unauthorized access to your streams. Gopher is a blast from the past, a protocol that predates HTTP for distributing documents. It's like an old library card catalog system. While mostly obsolete, some niche corners of the internet still use it, and understanding it can help in certain retro computing contexts. HTTP2 is the modern upgrade to HTTP, like swapping out your old bicycle for a sleek new motorcycle. It's faster and more efficient, but with new features come new security considerations that need to be addressed. NFS or network file system is like a shared drive where everyone can access files as if they were on their own computer. Great for collaboration, but can be a treasure trove for hackers if permissions aren't tight. AFP or Apple Filing Protocol is NFS cousin in the Apple world. It's the protocol that lets Mac users share files seamlessly. However, if not secured, it opens up the same risks as any file sharing protocol. ISCSI allows you to treat remote storage as if it's local, like having a magic bag that connects directly to a warehouse miles away. It's fantastic for storage area networks, but intercepting this connection could give attackers access to your data warehouse. Fiber Channel is like the bullet train of storage networks, fast and efficient. It's used in data centers for high-speed data transfer, but physical access to the network can spell disaster if not properly secured. FCOE or FIBRE channel over Ethernet combines the speed of fiber channel with the flexibility of Ethernet. It's like adding wings to your car. It can fly over traffic but requires careful handling to avoid crashes. NNTP, the network news transfer protocol, is used for Usenet articles. Think of it as the old school internet forum system. While not as prevalent today, it's still around and can be a source of information leakage, if not managed. Z-Wave and Zigbee are protocols used in home automation. Think smart lights and thermostats. They're like the secret language your smart devices use to talk to each other. If a hacker learns that language, it can start controlling your smart home. Bluetooth is the ubiquitous protocol for short-range wireless communication. It's like a handshake between devices to share data quickly. But leaving Bluetooth on and discoverable is like wearing a sign that says, Hack me. NFC, or near-field communication, is what powers contactless payments. It's like a quick fist bump to transfer small amounts of data, secure when used properly, but attackers with specialized equipment can attempt to intercept or mimic signals. A MQP, or Advanced Message Queuing Protocol, is used in enterprise messaging systems. It's like a postal service for business applications, ensuring messages are delivered reliably. Compromise here can disrupt business processes or expose sensitive data. The Constrained Application Protocol is designed for simple electronic devices. It's like a minimalistic language for IoT gadgets to communicate. Security is often minimal, making it a ripe target for hackers to exploit. SPDY was a precursor to HTTP2 developed by Google to speed up web traffic. It's like putting your data on a high-speed train, though mostly replaced. Now, understanding it helps in grasping how modern web protocols evolve. Quick standing for quick UDP internet connections is another Google innovation, aiming to make internet connections faster and more secure. It's like combining the speed of UDP with the reliability of TCP, giving you the best of both worlds. SMIME and PPTP are protocols for encrypting emails. Think of them as sealing your letters with a wax stamp that only the intended recipient can break without them. Your emails are like postcards anyone can read. DNP3 is used in industrial control systems, particularly in utilities like water and electricity. It's like the conductor of an orchestra, ensuring all components work in harmony. A breach here could lead to critical infrastructure failures. IEC 60705-104 is another industrial protocol, mainly used in electrical engineering. It's like the blueprint that ensures engineers speak the same technical language. Security weaknesses can be catastrophic, affecting power grids. Backnet is used in building automation, controlling HVAC, lighting, and security systems. It's like the building's central nervous system. Hacking into Backnet could give someone control over physical aspects of a building. Wi-Fi protocols like 802.11, AC, and 802.11 acts govern how your wireless devices communicate. They're the invisible airwaves connecting your devices to the internet. Weak Wi-Fi security is like leaving your front door open with a welcome mat for hackers. Ethernet protocols under the the IEE 802.3 standards define how wired networks function. They're like the roads your data cars drive on. Proper segmentation and security measures are essential to prevent data collisions and unauthorized access. SDP, or Spanning Tree Protocol, prevents loops in network topologies. Imagine a road system without traffic lights. STP is what keeps data from circling endlessly, causing traffic jams. If manipulated, it can bring network traffic to a standstill. RSTP and MSTP are improvements over STP, offering faster 
convergence and multiple spanning trees. They're like upgrading your traffic system with smart lights and roundabouts to keep things flowing smoothly. VPP or VLAN trunking protocol manages VLAN configurations across switches. It's like a city planner coordinating different neighborhoods, but if someone gains access, they can reconfigure your network's layout to their advantage. LACP or Link Aggregation Control Protocol bundles multiple network connections into a single logical link for increased bandwidth. It's like combining multiple lanes into a superhighway. Misconfigurations can lead to traffic being misrouted or dropped. IGMP or Internet Group Management Protocol manages multicast group memberships. It's like sending out party invites to multiple guests. An attacker can exploit IGMP to flood the network with unwanted traffic. PIM or Protocol Independent Multicast works with IGMP to route multicast traffic efficiently. It's like planning the best routes for delivering those party invites. If compromised, it can disrupt multicast communications. BFD or bi-directional forwarding detection quickly detects link failures. It's like having sensors on a bridge that alert you the moment there's a structural issue. Hackers can exploit BFD to create false alarms or hide real issues. LISP or locator ID separation protocol separates the identity of a network device from its location. It's like using a stage name instead of your real name. This adds flexibility but can complicate security if not properly managed. VexLAN, NVG, and Geneve are protocols used for network virtualization, creating virtual networks over physical ones. It's like building a virtual city on top of a real one. While powerful, they add layers of complexity that can be exploited if not secured. OpenFlow is a protocol that enables software-defined networking. It's like giving network administrators a remote control to manage network devices centrally, but if someone else gets that remote, they can change your network configuration at will. PCP or Path Computation. Element Communication Protocol helps compute efficient network paths. It's like using a GPS to find the best route. An attacker could manipulate PCP to reroute traffic through malicious nodes. RSVP or Resource Reservation Protocol reserves resources across a network. It's like booking seats in advance for a show. Unauthorized reservations can lead to denial of service for legitimate users. SSHFS allows you to mount remote file systems over SSH. It's like extending your local hard drive across the internet securely. If SSH is compromised though, so is your remote file system. NCP or NETWARE core protocol was used in older Novell networks. It's like the ancient script of networking languages, mostly obsolete but occasionally encountered in legacy systems. Lastly, let's touch on SDP, or Session Description Protocol, which describes multimedia communication sessions for the purposes of session, announcement, and invitation. Think of it as the party planner sending out detailed invites for a multimedia conference. If intercepted or altered, attendees might end up at the wrong party, or none at all. And there you have it. The whirlwind tour of 100 networking protocols every ethical hacker should know from the foundational protocols that make the internet possible to the specialized ones that control industrial systems. Each plays a crucial role in the digital landscape. Remember, understanding these protocols isn't just about memorizing acronyms. It's about grasping how data moves, where vulnerabilities lie, and how to protect against potential threats. As ethical hackers, it's our job to stay one step ahead, turning knowledge into defense. Thanks for joining me on this rapid journey through the networking world. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Policy Points for more deep dives into the tech that powers our lives. Until next time, keep exploring, stay curious, and happy hacking for now.